Kurama Suichi is not just a strategist, he is a master at reducing uncertainty in environments that thrive on chaos. His brilliance isn't built on luck or dramatic intuition. It's a system, measurable, testable, and deeply aligned with the ideas Douglas Hubbard outlines in How to Measure Anything. Hubbard's core premise is simple, but radical. Anything can be measured, even the seemingly intangible, if you reduce uncertainty just enough to inform a decision. Switch's methods follow this logic to the letter through surgical calibration of reality. Consider first the fundamental step of clearly defining what you want to measure. In Douglas Hubbard's framework, no measurement effort should begin without first identifying the decision at stake. During the Tower of Karma, Suichi understood that the variable he needed to influence wasn't just public opinion, it was the likelihood of police interference, particularly under pressure from the government. Kikru held overwhelming firepower compared to the SAT, and if the SAT were annihilated on live television, high-ranking officials who have remained passive would face public and political fallout. To avoid that outcome, they ordered the SAT to remain on standby and make the deputy commissioner take full responsibility for the situation. Sensing this, Suichi proposed a structured bet, an alternative that could de-escalate the situation without bloodshed. This offer wasn't just tactical, it was strategic reframing. If the police initiated a direct attack and failed, the consequences would be catastrophic. The possibility that the government would intervene by jamming the broadcast jeopardizing the entire Karameet. By proposing the wager, Suichi didn't just negotiate, he applied the core of Hubbard's measurement strategy. He reduced uncertainty in a way that directly informed a critical decision. The deputy commissioner was no longer trapped in a vague dilemma of whether to act or not. Instead, Suichi offered a limited, structured alternative that made the choice more observable, less ambiguous, and easier to assess. In Hubbard's terms, Suichi clarified the decision context and reduced uncertainty where it mattered most, whether or not the police would interfere. Rather than trying to predict complex human behavior, he decomposed the problem into a controllable variable, create conditions where non-interference became the least risky and most rational option. This is not prediction. This is decision-relevant measurement, achieved by isolating the key uncertainty and engineering incentives around it. Then comes the idea of calibrated estimates. In How to Measure Anything, Douglas Hubbard explains that a calibrated estimate isn't about being certain, it's about expressing your confidence in a judgment with increasing precision. It means reducing error margins over time, learning to consistently assign probabilities that match reality. In decision-making, it's not the presence of ambiguity that matters, but how well you navigate through it, tightening your confidence range as evidence accumulates. Suichi demonstrates this principle with surgical clarity during surpassing the leader. When Baku steps in front of him, blocking his view, Suichi doesn't jump to conclusions. He analyzes. He recalls that Baku is someone with an acute, almost godlike strategic sense, someone who wouldn't interfere without purpose. Suichi was about to check behind him for the handkerchief, but Baku's sudden action interrupts this. That alone is suspicious. Now the calibration begins. Suichi considers a critical contradiction. If the handkerchief hadn't yet been dropped, then Baku, by stopping him, would be saving him from a failed check, but saving an opponent isn't Baku's style. That's not godlike. From that logic, a more consistent interpretation emerges. Baku has already dropped the handkerchief. And now, by delaying Suichi's action and flooding him with ambiguous cues, Baku is trying to buy time to accumulate more of the near-death drug. Suichi doesn't arrive at this conclusion all at once. He narrows the range of viable interpretations as more behavior unfolds. He discards lower probability models and accepts the one that best aligns with Baku's known style and incentives. That is a calibrated estimate, a mental model constantly updated as new input arrives, until one conclusion outweighs the rest. With the probability now high enough, Suichi makes the check, and he's right. The handkerchief had already been dropped. This isn't intuition. It's measured reasoning under uncertainty, exactly the kind of thinking Hubbard argues separates skilled decision-makers from the rest. One example of reducing uncertainty by focus the measurement efforts on collecting relevant data via controlled experiments happens during the phone call between Yakoi and Gakuto. Suspecting that Yakoi may be held hostage and not in control of his phone, Suichi doesn't just speculate, he runs a real-time experiment. He sends an email to Yakoi's phone during the call and listens carefully for changes in the audio. When Yakoi's voice suddenly sounds distant, Suichi interprets this as a signal indicating the phone is being handled by someone else, likely the captor. 
This is masterful because the cost of measurement is just an email and there is zero risk for Suichi. By deliberately injecting this stimulus the email and observing the system's output voice quality, Suichi performs a binary test. If Yakue himself was holding the phone, the voice would stay consistent. If not, the voice shifts as the phone is checked. This measurement sharpens Suichi's estimate, allowing him to reduce uncertainty about Yakue's status without direct visual confirmation. Through this precise, data-driven method, Suichi transforms ambiguous information into actionable intelligence, embodying Hubbard's principles of measurement in uncertain environments. All of this is Hubbard's thesis in motion. Measurement doesn't always mean numbers. It means reducing uncertainty to the point that a better decision can be made. Suichi doesn't need perfect information. He just needs less uncertainty than the other side. And unlike others who wait for confirmation bias, Suichi constantly puts his hypotheses under pressure. When the world doesn't behave as he expects, he doesn't rationalize it, he updates. This approach also reveals another subtle brilliance. Suichi only collects what matters. Hubbard warns against measurement for the sake of measurement. Suichi understands this instinctively. When faced with multiple unknowns, he doesn't try to know everything. He isolates the variable that matters, defines the consequences of being wrong, and runs micro-experiments to reduce the uncertainty just enough to make the call. Suichi's strategic mindset exemplifies the core lesson from Hubbard's how to measure anything. Measurement is not about accumulating perfect or complete information. Rather, it is about reducing uncertainty sufficiently to make a better informed decision. To emulate Suichi's effectiveness, consider these practical steps drawn from the book. 1. Define the decision clearly. Start by precisely framing the decision you need to make. What is the specific question or action at stake? This clarifies what you must measure and prevents wasted effort on irrelevant data. 2. Identify the critical uncertainties. Not all unknowns matter equally. Focus on isolating the variables that have the greatest impact on your decision's outcome. Suichi instinctively avoids data overload by homing in on these high leverage uncertainties. 3. Use calibrated estimates. Instead of seeking certainty, develop probabilistic estimates that acknowledge risk and confidence ranges. Calibrated estimates sharpen your judgment and allow you to update as new information arrives. 4. Design micro-experiments to test hypotheses. Actively test your assumptions with small, controlled observations or interventions like Switch's phone trap or faked death, gathering just enough data to tilt odds in your favor. Measurement by reaction, binary tests, or calibrated sensing are key tools here. 5. Constantly update your model. Resist confirmation bias. When reality deviates from your expectations, treat it as new data, not a failure. Update your mental model fluidly, refining your understanding and recalibrating decisions accordingly. 6. Prioritize actionable insights over excess data. Measurement for measurement psychic is wasted effort. Always ask, does this information reduce uncertainty enough to influence my decision? If not, redirect your resources. By internalizing these principles, decision makers can navigate ambiguity with strategic clarity, just as Switchy does. In a complex world where perfect knowledge is unattainable, the power lies not in what you know, but in knowing what matters well enough to act confidently.